Good evening, I'm Harry Keeling, and on behalf of the Alaskan Aviation Safety Foundation and Alaska Public Media, welcome to Hangar Flying. We've been fortunate the last couple of sessions to have Mark Lucan on our program. Mark is the uh, Department of Transportation Commissioner for the state of Alaska, and he's a very experienced pilot and public servant. And the past couple of sessions, we've been talking about the aviation uh, uh, plan that the state's working on. We talked about the budget and, uh, you know, got some real perspective from his position as the commissioner. Welcome back, Mark. Thank you, Harry. Tonight, I want to talk a little bit about, I want to draw upon your experience as a pilot. Mm -hmm. uh, career in the Air Force, flying the best airplanes that we had or have. Mm -hmm. um, and what I want to talk about is the uh, similarities and some of your thoughts on safety that were developed over these years mm -hmm. flying in the Air Force and, and beyond. One of the things that we've been faced with here recently, it's just mind-boggling, is the mid-air collisions. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think at one point the average probably is something like one or two per every 10 years. Mm -hmm. And yet we have had two this year. We had three, three years ago. Mm -hmm. We've had fatalities. And the most recent ones, I just, I don't know how to explain it. Right. What's the secret? Yeah, well, I think the, I don't know if we could call it a secret, but certainly, you know, from a pilot's perspective, um, we've got to use all our senses, you know, and to keep our situational awareness up. And, um, you know, recognize that, you know, around many of these airports, it, it's a busy pattern, and yet it's not controlled. And so the only way we're going to be, uh, you know, certain that, uh, um, that we are going to be, you know, be, you know, safe in our aircraft, but also safe with the other guys sharing the pattern are, you know, we've got, we're on the right radio frequency, we're, we're communicating not just um, with where we are, but we're listening and know where everybody else is as well. And then obviously our head's on a swivel. We've got to be, we got to be looking outside. Yeah. You know, and I think that one of the first things that people need to recognize, and it's a hard thing to recognize, is this could happen to you. Yes. It's one of these things that, you know, hey, it's big sky, there's no, and that's wrong. Yeah, can't take it for granted. <laughs> it's just crazy. Um, and the timing of this, um, Millicent Hoytel from the NTSB is going to be on with Mary mm -hmm. here, I think, uh, next week. Or, or And she, she wrote a paper a uh, couple weeks ago on mid-air collisions. Mm -hmm. And then a week later, we have the, the right. mishap at, at Talkeetna. Mm -hmm. um, well, you know, from a different perspective, Mark, as an F-15 guy and your air-to-air -air experience, mm -hmm. um, any thoughts on techniques to, I mean, when you are actively trying to find other traffic? Talk a little bit about that. Yeah, I think the, the thing we used to always um, uh, recognize and, um, and have to do is remember that, you know, your, your focal, you know, where, you, where your eyes focus is, is just about where, you're, where, you're, where the windscreen is. And so you've got to be deliberate about looking uh, well beyond uh, that position and then find something that you can focus on uh, at a distance because that's the only way you're, you know, in many cases, that's the only way you're going to see, uh, see another aircraft out there. Um. <clears throat> you and I talked briefly about something that we've tried to push uh, recently and it's nothing new, but, uh, and that's a concept of risk assessment, a, mm -hmm. a, a um, structured approach to look at the mission you're about to fly and, and grade it and put values on it. Uh, what was your experience in the Air Force with that? Well, you know, we, uh, we really began taking this seriously in the, in the late 90s, early 2000s, and it, in my estimation, it really revolutionized um, safety for, uh, especially in the fighter world, uh, to the point where we were down below one per, per 100,000 hours of flying, uh, you know, an accident rate. And which was had never been done before. Uh, so there was, um, in my you know, in my mind, you know, doing this risk assessment, you know, a deliberate uh, assessment of the risk that uh, that you're going to take on uh, is is very valuable. 
And what I find interesting is uh, I actually had a chance to work in the oil industry for the last couple of years, and, and they do something very similar. Mm -hmm. um, and certainly, uh, again, a very risky industry, uh, risk, uh, high risk industry, and so um, they are very, very deliberate about uh, assessing risk when they when they're going to do major major work. That's interesting. Well, I'm going to go out on a limb here and see if I can recall the numbers, but I think in World War II, the accident rate was 144 per hundred thousand hours. Hmm. I can remember when I was flying, like the F100, it was five, six, or seven, mm -hmm. yes. and you're saying you remember below one. That's, That's pretty remarkable. Yes, there's a lesson to be learned there. Mm -hmm. Mark, thanks for being on the program. Thanks for sharing with us your vision uh, as we go as you go forward as the commissioner. It's always good to have you on the program. Well, thank you for the opportunity, Harry. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed tonight's program. Until next time, fly safe.